Hey everybody, it's Mario from PilotEffect.com. In this video, we are talking about the PT6 engine. Let's just jump right into it. The PT6 is a popular turboprop engine used on over 100 different aircraft types. Power production varies based on the engine model. At the low end, the PT6A-21, which is used on the King Air C90, produces 550 horsepower. At the high end, the PT6A-68B, used on the Pilatus PC-21, produces 1600 horsepower. There are also turboshaft versions used on helicopters with power levels ranging from 900 horsepower to 1970 horsepower. As a turboprop engine, the PT6 is a variant of the gas turbine engine. Specifically, it's a reverse flow, free turbine turboprop. Reverse flow means that the airflow enters the engine at the back, flows forward, and is exhausted at the front. This might seem odd at first glance, but it serves a purpose. The reverse flow arrangement allows for a shorter power shaft, and a shorter power shaft means lighter structure with fewer vibration problems. Free turbine means that the power turbine is on a separate shaft from the compressor turbine. This brings the engine several advantages including the facts that the compressor and the power shaft can rotate at different speeds. And startup is easier since the starting system only has to turn the compressor shaft. Power output only kicks in once the compressor and the compressor turbine are running. The compressor and the compressor turbine with the compressor shaft and the combustion chamber make up the gas generator. The purpose of the gas generator is to produce high pressure high temperature gas to drive the power turbine. The power turbine extracts energy from the gases and outputs the power to the reduction gearbox. So let's look at the whole process from start to finish. Air enters through the intake at the back of the engine. From there it flows to the compressor. The compressor consists of three or four axial stages depending on the engine model and a single centrifugal compressor stage. After each set of rotor blades is a set of stator vanes. Rotor blades provide kinetic energy to the airflow, and the stator vanes convert that kinetic energy to pressure before passing the airflow onto the next stage. After the final stage of the compressor, the air flows into the combustion chamber, also called the burner. In the burner, fuel is injected and burned to increase the temperature of the air. Combustion is continuous from startup to shutdown, and it occurs at approximately constant pressure. Once the air has been compressed in the compressor and heated in the burner, it flows through the compressor turbine. The compressor turbine is a single stage axial flow turbine. It is here that the energy required to run the compressor gets extracted from the airstream. As the air flows through the turbine, its pressure and temperature drop as the turbine absorbs the energy required to turn the compressor. The compressor and the compressor turbine are both mounted on the same shaft, and they turn at the same rate. At this point, the heated air is exiting the gas generator and entering the power turbine. The power turbine has one or two axial stages depending on the engine model. Like the compressor turbine, the power turbine extracts energy from the airstream. This energy is output by the power shaft to the reduction gearbox. The power is transferred from the power turbine to the propeller by a two-stage planetary gearbox. The reduction gearbox receives power at a high rotation rate and low torque, and then outputs the power to the propeller at a lower rotation rate but higher torque. After passing through the power turbine, the exhaust gases are vented through a nozzle. At this point, they still contain some residual energy that wasn't extracted by the turbines. This energy is used to accelerate the gases through the nozzle to produce a small amount of jet thrust. And that's all I have for you in this video. Now before I let you go, I just want to tell you about our course. It's called A Brief Introduction to Aviation. In this course, we cover introductory level theory of flight, meteorology, flight instruments, and more. It's free to enroll. Links are in the description. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.